Hello, this is the uh, second part of my uh, presentation on systematic planning in the West and Baha'i communities. Uh, it comes from an old essay I wrote, The Baha'i Faith in the West, a survey published by Karamat in 2004. From the 1950s onwards, the Baha'i Faith became an increasingly globalized religion. Baha'i growth in the West, forming part of the wider whole. A pattern of successive global plans became the norm, involving all extant NSAs, National Assemblies, uh, starting with Shaka Effendi's 10-year global crusade from 1953 to 63, and then the Universal House of Justice's first nine-year plan from 1964 to 1973. Both of these plans aimed to increase the number of Baha'is in the main existing communities and to establish new Baha'i groups and institutions throughout the world. Each national community had its own uh, plan as a component part of the international plans. Uh, by 1963, the total number of Western Baha'is, including children and youth, uh, had risen to approximately 25,000, uh, including 19,000 in the United States and Canada, 5,000 in Europe, and 1,000 in Australia and New Zealand. And by 1968, there were over 40,000 uh, Baha'is in the West, out of a then world total of 1.2 uh, million. You need to see the published article for more details and for references to my sources there. Um, so uh, the statistics, I should say, were kindly provided to me by the Department of Statistics at the Baha'i World Center uh, in a memorandum I received in May 1988, uh, for which many thanks. Uh, given the small size of the Western communities in the early 1950s, around about 7,000, this increase is quite marked. But it's not overly impressive, uh, particularly when you compare it to growth in, of the Baha'i communities in the global south. Uh, but we can say that in the absence of political constraints, systematic planning provides a basis for sustained growth, but not for any dramatic increase in the number of Baha'is in the West. Uh, besides the growth in numbers, uh, the 50s, 1950s and 1960s saw a number of other significant achievements as part of the two successive international plans. Despite the fewness of their numbers, Western Baha'is attained an impressive geographical diffusion indicated by the number of recorded localities in which Baha'is resided. And again, uh, you need to see the article to uh, appreciate all the details of this. Uh, before the general adoption of systematic planning, there were very few localities in the West. In 1928, uh, only 141 across uh, North America, Europe, and Australasia, um, uh, with about half each in North America and Europe. Uh, but by 1945, um, these have risen to a thousand. Or, or around about 1,000, and by 1968 to 4,000, uh, two thirds by that time in North America. Again, the original article contains a table with more detailed statistics um, if you want to look at it. Uh, of these localities, only a minority have the necessary minimum of nine adult uh, Baha'is uh, to form local spiritual assemblies. Uh, the increase in local assemblies was slower than the increase in localities. In 1928, there were 68 local spiritual assemblies, and by 1945, this has only risen to 146, nearly all of them in North America. Thereafter, growth was more marked, the total number rising to 723 in 1968, a uh, five-fold increase since 1945. Uh, during the same period, there was also an increase, quite dramatic, in the number of national spiritual assemblies, from four in 1945 
only three in 1928, to 21 in 1968. Uh, this increase was largely the result of assembly formation in Europe between 1953 and uh, 1962. Uh, of note was the general pattern of this formation of uh, national assemblies. Um, and this is quite complicated to summarize, but basically uh, the original four Western assemblies, that's the British Isles, Germany and Austria, the United States and Canada, Australia and New Zealand, were later split into their component units. And then after World War II, regional assemblies were initially established for Italy and Switzerland, and for the Benelux, Iberian, and most of the Nordic countries before separate individual assemblies were established for each of the component countries in 1962. Assemblies were also established for France, Iceland, Greece, and Cyprus, and later for several sub-national areas, uh, Sicily, the Canary Islands, and Greenland. A uh, similar procedure was followed after the collapse of communism in the former Eastern Bloc countries, with national assemblies there being established uh, from 1991 uh, onwards. Other achievements in the West have included the construction of the first Baha'i Houses of Worship in Australasia and Europe, with the house in Australia being opened in 1961, and that in West Germany, as it then was in 1964, uh, bringing the total of uh, houses of worship in the West to three, with Wilmette in the US. Uh, then also, um, each national Baha'i community has established its own administrative headquarters, Baha'i publishing trusts have been established for all the major European languages, there's been a massive increase in the range of literature available uh, in the major European languages, as well as the concerted endeavor to produce literature in the minority languages of Europe and North America. Um, so these are the two houses of worship uh, in Sydney and Hoffheim Langenheim. That's all I'm going to say for the moment. If you want a general overview of Baha'i history, uh, my now ancient Bhavi and Baha'i religions from Cambridge, and also a short summary uh, from One World. Uh, general introductions to the Baha'i faith, my Cambridge introduction, and a concise encyclopedia of, one, of the Baha'i faith from One World. Uh, so many thanks to you for listening, and uh, particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement, without, with, without whom I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Uh, if you want to support my channel, you're very welcome to do so. Uh, like, comment and share on the videos. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. And uh, Patreon, and for the moment, PayPal links. Uh, I'll give below. Next week we'll talk about mass teaching in the West. Have a good day.